So we're going to switch gears to the uh, environmental uh, um, impact uh, of animal agriculture. And, you know, so, so the bigger picture, and we've heard a lot about this, I know um, we talked about it last night on the panel, if you heard that panel, that, uh, you know, just having this many animals alive uh, is causing all kinds of, um, of issues, farmed animals uh, in these conditions. We're, you know, seeing uh, impact on climate change and water use and pollution, uh, soil erosion, air pollution, all these things. But what about these alternative labels? So that's what I want to talk about today. Uh, so meat's carbon hoofprint, and this, this is how it works, folks, in the field. This is uh, the actual, yeah, I, I think it's funny, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, if, if you could see it like that, maybe it'd be a little more because we, you know, can, can actually see car exhaust, but you don't see it like this. But animal agriculture releases over half of the human-caused greenhouse gas emissions. Over half. This is from two prominent World Bank environmental advisors who, uh, you know, in their, um, the release of their study, they greatly encouraged a global shift to a plant-based diet, that this would be uh, so much uh, faster and easier than our current trajectory of switching from uh, uh, fossil fuels to renewables. You know, that takes infrastructure change and government involvement and billions of dollars and time that we don't have. Global shift to a plant-based diet wouldn't take any money, it wouldn't take any infrastructure change, it just takes the will of the people to make conscious choices. Um, so water needs, uh, we'll just go through this quick. You can see on the left side, this is how much water it takes to, to grow apples, potatoes, the same amount of soybeans, and then, oh, the water use starts going up over there to the right, eggs, chicken, pork, wow, a lot more water. What about local? So let's talk about local. It's not her fault. It's not, <laughs> it's not the cow's fault. So uh, local animal products are not entirely local or environmentally sound. This has really um, become such a buzzword that we see. Oh, local, local, local. Uh, but unfortunately, um, you know, this is uh, an interesting uh, paper from the George Mason University. They investigated the validity of food miles. That's another way of saying how local your food is, this new term. And they had this to say, quote, the evidence presents suggests that food miles are at best a marketing fad that frequently severely distorts the environmental impact of agricultural production. At worst, food miles constitute, constitute excuse me, a dangerous distraction from very real and serious issues that affect uh, energy consumption and environmental impact. So how local the food is, is if you look at uh, the carbon footprint of a food, it's only about 11% of the equation. Production is 83%. And animal products are heavy on production. There's, you know, these are indoor environments with milking machines and lighting and heating and the slaughter process. Lots of energy consumption. Um, so, uh, so food carbon's footprint, here we are, I just mentioned that. The life cycle assessment, and this is how you assess how much carbon emissions are happening with a certain food, so from like seed to plate or with an animal inception to plate, uh, they assess these, and over and over we're seeing that local animal products have a higher impact than non-local plant foods. So you're shopping at the store and you see a, a tomato that's maybe from Mexico and you think, oh gosh, so many food miles. You know, I'll bet this local organic dairy is better. No, absolutely not. Way higher production on the local organic dairy. You know, uh, it's, it, it's more impactful. Uh, so greenhouse gas and energy consumption, still an issue. Water waste and pollution, still an issue with local animal agriculture. A study in the Journal of Environmental Science and Technology found that switching just two meals a week from meat and dairy to a vegetable-based diet achieves more greenhouse gas reduction than buying all locally sourced food. So the problem is with animal products, so much more than transportation. What about organic? So uh, I found some really, really interesting peer-reviewed studies around organic. 
uh, and the impacts on the planet. Uh, there was a Swedish study of organic pork production that found that they, uh, this pork production actually created more nitrous o nitrogen oxide, and nitrogen oxide is another contributor to greenhouse gases, not only carbon dioxide, there's numerous gases that are creating uh, the, the climate change effect, uh, methane, nitrous oxide, and others, and they found that actually this pork production created more nitrous oxide uh, and other greenhouse gases than conventional pork. Uh, another study found that organic milk production significantly increased land use and methane emissions. So just because the organic label is on there does not necessarily mean that it's more environmentally sustainable. Um, so this is a really great chart to show what I'm talking about. Uh, these are different diets. At the top we have veganism, vegetarian in the middle, a diet that includes dairy and eggs at the bottom. So that bottom long line, and of course the lines coming over is how much impact uh, we have on climate change with our diet. So this one at the bottom, the, uh, the green, dark green, and, and the dark green and the light green, dark green is organic, or non-organic, conventional farming, the light green is organic. So that bottom line is the standard American diet. That's what everyone's eating, and that's how much greenhouse gases they're producing, all the way over here. So let's say someone says, oh, I really want to eat more environmental. I'm going to go all organic. I'm going to buy organic meat and organic dairy. Okay, well, you're helping a little. You reduce your impact by 8%. You're going up to that next line, 8%. Okay? But let's say someone says, hey, I really want to help the environment. I'm going to go vegan. Not even talking about organic now, just conventional vegan. Wow then you're going to reduce your impact 87%. You're going way up to that dark green line at the top. And then the ultimate in reduction, going all organic plant-based, 96% reduction, that top little line there. So, so much more, again, impact with animal products than with organic or local. Grass-fed beef. Now, this one was shocking to me. You know, grass-fed beef can produce 50 to 60% more greenhouse gas emissions than their grain-eating cousins. And more water is wasted as well. I mean, this is the reason people are buying grass-fed beef. It's because they think it's more environmental. And it's interesting, when I was researching my book, I um, really believed that I was going to have to concede uh, over and over again that, well, you know, it's better than, but going vegan's the best. Well, it's a little better, but going vegan's the best. I thought I was going to be saying that over and over in my book. No. No, I was not. These labels mean nothing. Sometimes it's the same, sometimes it's worse. So this is a free-range situation, similar to what we were talking about um, with the cage-free, free-range. So, you know, just because it has a free-range label doesn't mean that there's anything different about it. This could be a conventional cage-free operation, this can be uh, a, a, a free-range, you know, so there's very, very little difference environmentally, especially when we're talking about poultry. Uh, but let's give it the benefit of the doubt. Let's say that they are giving the animals a little more room to roam around, to be outside, pasture-raised. Uh, hog operations are doing this now more and more. We simply do not have the land to pasture-raise all the animals that we have on this planet. Right now, they're taking up 20% of the usable land. We just don't have the land to do this local plant or um, local uh, uh, pasture-raised thing. We would have to, in, in many areas, we'd have to start clearing, uh, you know, prairie lands and wetlands and cutting down forests to, to raise these local animals. We would need closer to five planet Earths to be able to pasture-raise all the animals that we have to feed seven billion people. It cannot be done. That is why we have confined all the animals. That's why there's uh, this industrial production. We don't have the room. You know, free range and pasture base can never be more than a niche market for a few elite buyers. We can't do it large scale. It can't feed everyone. So, uh, organic's good, local, you know, can be good, but plant-based is best. If you're talking about environmentally, if you want to eat green, conventional plant foods cause far less environmental damage than organic local animal foods. And of course, the best is to eat organic plant foods. I absolutely encourage to eat organic. I don't mean to say that conventional is better than organic when we're talking about plants, but I'm just saying that you don't have to. 
do organic to make a better impact. You just got to cut out the animal products. This is a quote from my book. Animal products are a luxury, a lavish meal that the earth can no longer afford. We must start thinking and acting beyond convenience and tradition and evolve to be honorable global citizens con concerned for the state of the environment and the well-being of our children worldwide. A plant-based diet is by far the most ecological dietary choice we can make. And I get into so much more in the book that I just didn't have time for here. Massive amounts of water wasted, uh, water pollution, um, air pollution, uh, soil degradation, loss of biodiversity and species, loss of wildlife, all of this connected to animal agriculture. I just don't have time to get into it, but it's all in the book. 